Teachers, what is the craziest thing you've seen on a student's social media? Story 1. I was teaching 8th grade English in a low-income, high-crime area. We had one student who was really hard. He was loud, obnoxious, rude, and downright mean to most of the staff and other students. For some reason, I really liked him, and he felt the same. Always respectful to me and often helped me keep the class in line. The other teachers and students would always make comments about how we will see him up for unaliving one day, and I would stick up for him. He came from a really bad home life most of us were not fully aware of. Anyway, he friended me on Facebook at the end of the school year, and I accepted. About four years later, I saw an update posted by him. He posted quite a bit, from a couple nights before that simply showed a gun and bullets with a caption, Some shrews are gonna pay, getting my turf back, or something like that. Anyway, long story short, he was involved in a drive-by and unalived a 17-year-old kid who was at a rival's party. He was not the intended victim. Anyway, when the news ran the story and showed his Facebook post as what helped the police find him, my blood ran cold. I wish I would have seen the post earlier or could have done something. He was sentenced to 20 years since they couldn't prove who pulled the trigger. Still makes me sad. I really thought he would break the cycle of poverty and prison that has run through his family line forever. It sounds like this teacher reached this kid in some level. I wouldn't blame the teacher at all for this. The teacher did all he could. I'm sure he encouraged this student. I'm pretty sure that student had the power to break those chains. It's sad to see that it ended up this way, though. Story 2. When I was in graduate school, I was living with a cop as a roommate. One time, I came home and saw her clearly on one of my students' Facebook accounts. He had posted pictures of himself in the dorm doing illegal stuff. Alcohol and herbs, so, like, expected illegal stuff for a college kid. But it was incredibly awkward for me because she told me they were investigating him, and then I got to see him in class the next day. I worked a be-careful-what-you-post-on-social-media lesson into what we were doing, but he ended up getting kicked out of the dorms not long after, and I'm not sure if they pursued anything else. This isn't really crazy, but, oh man, I stressed myself out so much in that week. I felt bad for him because she was talking about nailing him to the wall for it. But I also felt like I couldn't openly warn him. And yes, this story is old because students were still on Facebook and Herb was still a fairly serious charge. Also, I was awkward and young. And today I think I would just openly warn the student. <laughs> Definitely be careful on what you post on social media. I'm not encouraging anyone to do anything illegal or dangerous. But if you can see it on social media, anyone can see it on social media. This just goes to prove that there are other people watching you than you would like to. People you don't want to watch you. Story 3. I had a student tell me that he had to go out and look for his roommate's body and therefore would not be in class and that his roommate had been unalived in a kayaking incident. Now, when a student perishes, we are told. At some past institutions, this was not the case. For example, if you had a student from your course commit self-unaliving, you were just supposed to act like nothing was wrong and that nothing had happened and that they had never been there. So quite honestly, it was like, okay, this might be true or dude might be lying. It was a few years ago and so I got on Facebook, found the student, and identified the roommate. Unfortunately, it was true. Unfortunately, he was not the one that found the body. And the announcement came out slightly thereafter. I was able to excuse the absence without further evidence, which is always a nice thing to be able to do for somebody. The crazy thing, though, was that his roommate's quote was, What doesn't unalive me makes me stronger. It was uncomfortable. It's truly awful when a really happy activity turns into something tragic. Did anyone know the details about this? Hopefully he didn't suffer too long. Hopefully there wasn't any foul play involved. Story 4 not a teacher, but in my high school, there was a guy who posted a dimly lit video of him committing self-unaliving. His friends reported the post to a teacher who called the police and an ambulance. The responders arrived at the guy's house to find him completely okay. Turns out, he posted a video he found on the internet that looked enough like him. He didn't try to commit self-unaliving. They took him to the hospital anyway to evaluate him. He stuck to his story until the teacher ratted him out was a close-knit alternative school where the students were close to and on a first-name basis with teachers trying to get kids to see the school as a community and go to classes regularly. 
This same kid threw a Halloween party earlier the same year where a hundred kids showed up and hung out in a snazzy building, only to realize that after midnight that all of his excuses about why we couldn't go amounted to the fact that he didn't even live there. Weird guy. I wonder what he's up to now. Story 5. My mom cooks in a school, and they have a parents group for the teachers to communicate with the parents, and all the parents do is moan about, My Billy only got one sausage with his peas today, and yesterday said he had a slice of pizza when the menu specifically said mini pizzas. I'm disgusted at this excuse for a meal. Meanwhile, their kids are being ignored while their single mothers are being internet warriors. She slaves in that kitchen and plans everything out precisely and goes out of her way to make each kid feel special, helping the ones with allergies and making their own menus. It is the most ridiculous and saddest thing I've ever seen. One kid had that green pasta and told his mom it was moldy, so she went on a massive online rampage trying to slag off my mom and get her in trouble just because what a four-year-old says must be true. Story 6 In my second year of teaching, I had this kid in my class whose Facebook profile picture was him holding a gun pointed at the camera. Okay, maybe it doesn't sound super crazy, but mind you, I taught fifth grade, and his mom was his Facebook friend. The scary part was that he was kicked out of school at the end of the year before for bringing a gun to school. Fourth grade. His mom also thought he was a prophet. I literally spent that whole year wondering if he would bring a gun to school. He was seriously off his rocker, and his mom never made him take his meds. Second, not really social media. But I had a student who looked up boys effing their moms on a school-issued Kindle. This kid was only in fourth grade. And to make it worse, in third grade, I had him two years in a row because I looped up. He inappropriately harassed a female student and wrote graphic disturbing letters. Kid seriously had me worried. I think this is a blessing to have on social media. This way you know where the people who have issues are, and if at all possible, you can avoid them. Why did the mom think this kid was a prophet? Was she not taking her meds either? Story 7. Not exactly social media originally, but it definitely ended up there. I taught high school, and the students were talking about a middle school student who wrote a novel. It turned out to be an extremely graphic fan fiction of two of the male middle school teachers. The girl that wrote it was in 7th grade. We are talking about a full-on novel, around 200 pages and 13 chapters. Supposedly, it is only book one in the series. The crazy thing is, my student showed me one paragraph before I knew what it was, and it was hands down the best technical writing of any student I have ever had. Again, I teach high school. She was in the 7th grade. Unbelievably well-written. And unbelievable, a 7th grader was able to describe things with such disturbing detail. Story 8. These teachers at my school found a kid's meme page and kept in mind that it was a preppy stuck-up school. Anyway, the meme account had the usually slightly edgy kind of content, but the school acted as if it were a hate crime. Parents were called in. There was a whole school assembly on social media and the appropriate content that should be posted. The school went as far as suspending the kids behind the account for one week and giving detentions to every kid who liked the memes. The whole ordeal was just stupid and left me wondering if teachers even cared about the kids who were very clearly smashed on pharmaceuticals. Story 9. So, in my school district, teachers can lose their jobs for following students on social media. That being said, Sometimes, a student will get worried about something that they see posted and will bring me a screenshot of it. So, due to that, the craziest thing I've ever seen was one of our students pointing a gun at the camera and threatening to turn the walls of the school red with blood. I took the student who reported it to the front office and made a full report to the administration. Never saw the kid who posted it again. We've all heard stories about kids being inappropriate with teachers and vice versa. I don't think the rule of getting in trouble for following a kid on social media is all that crazy. I'd be willing to bet that that particular school district had issues before like this. Still, I'm glad this student was able to get to the teacher and have the issue of the other kid reported. I wonder if the administration had the ability to follow social media. Story 10. Not me, but it happened to an acquaintance of mine when he was in high school. He's not a teacher either. 
One of the students in his class went missing. Parents were freaking out because it was unusual for their kid to disappear without a trace like that. A week later, the cops found his decapitated head, but cops never found the rest of the body, though. My acquaintance told me the whole school was freaking out about what happened. Apparently, the guy was a small-time substance dealer, and something happened. Story 11. So, I am no longer a teacher. Also, when I tell the story, it will be clear how long ago this was. But when I was teaching, Facebook was popular, but MySpace was still around. I didn't really use it, but my students did. My profile was still active, though. Well, I had one kid try to friend me on MySpace. I, of course, wouldn't do it, but I decided to click on his page because I was curious. The first picture he has is one of his girlfriends, who was also in my class, in her bra and panties. These kids were in 8th grade. I immediately deactivated my profile. I wanted to talk to them about it, but that would mean I had to acknowledge that I saw it. Story 12. I know that the teachers were weirded out as hell when they saw this. This kid in my old school, 6th grader with ADHD, had a reputation for not giving a care about anything and trying to needlessly impress people. Once out of school, this kid deep-throated a stick, like he knew what he was doing, I guess. He gathered us around and started sucking off this stick. It was weird as hell, and I didn't know why he did it. Some kid happened to be filming it and put it online. The video went viral at the school, and everyone knew about it. He got brought out to the principal's office, and when asked why he did it, he just said, because he liked it. The teacher must have been so confused. Not too long ago, this would have just been a story. Some people would have believed it, some people wouldn't have, whether it was true or not. Again, that's the issue with video today and social media. Everybody knows for sure. It's like the old proverb, better to keep your mouth shut and let people think you're an idiot than open your mouth and remove all doubt. Story 13. When I was in middle school, there was a trend where we made fake Facebook events and invited a bunch of people. One time, my brother or one of his friends made one that was called Gay Slash Lesbian Orgy in Friend's Name's House and invited a bunch of people. He invited one of my friends, a girl around 15 years old, that went to a different school and barely knew the people involved in the event. And she clicked that she would attend without paying much attention to the name. A few days later, one of her teachers approached her after class to have a very awkward conversation along the lines of, I know you might be struggling with figuring out your spicy tendencies, but taking part in things like that could be very dangerous. My friend was very confused. Story 14. Not a teacher, but still got a story. There was a girl in my class. Smart, funny, top grades, etc. She got a boyfriend with a bad reputation. Her grades started dropping, and overall she just became... sad, I guess. One day, there was a rumor that there were topless pictures of her on social media. A rumor like that spreads like wildfire in high school. And lo and behold, there were the pictures with her boyfriend's reflection in the mirror as he was holding her dog up by its leash as if he was strangling it. Jerk. Story 15. A student was admitted to Stanford and tweeted like, got into Stanford or something. Stanford apparently checked out his Twitter and he had tweets that were misogynistic and other tweets talking about smoking herb. Stanford rescinded his admission and called the school to let the principal know exactly why his admission was rescinded. He ended up being fine went to another good school on a full scholarship, but not as good as Stanford. An expensive lesson about social media. Wow. Stanford is completely salty. I think this is why some people have several Twitter accounts. One for their social stuff, one for their business stuff. I wonder if anyone has filed a lawsuit after Stanford did something like this to them. The smoking herb stuff shouldn't really be an issue. The misogynistic stuff I could understand. Story 16. Speaking for my wife here, she was on the bus with 30 high school students on their way to a field trip. She was trying to share something with a co-worker over airdrop, and her phone started getting flooded with nude photos of students. Apparently, there is an option on airdrop to insta-share photos with anyone else who has airdrop on. Goes without saying she freaked out and shut her phone off, then had a long talk with them afterwards about how dangerous that is. Story 17. Ex-high school teacher here. One of my year 11, 16 to 17-year-old girls had her modeling shots on her public Instagram. 
The shots were topless, featuring fake blood, spicy toys, and another model who I didn't know. It had already made the rounds and been reported to the school by the time I was shown. The kids were already at risk, so it was just another massive red flag that she needed far more help and support than she was getting. Story 18. Not me, but my girlfriend. Principal called all the teachers to talk about something a couple of students had done. They were, I assume, boyfriend and girlfriend, and stayed in the classroom during break. She went down on him, with one hand on his peen and the other filming for social media. Snapchat, I guess. The security camera caught it, too. Story 19. One student created multiple fake Facebooks with the names of their classmates. They started a group chat between these fake profiles and would act out dramatic things. Someone confessing a crush, someone saying they hated their best friend. They'd screenshot clips of the fake chats and send it to real people. Real-life drama based on the fake drama would erupt in school. Story 20. Not me, but my wife. A student posted a self-unaliving note on Snapchat. Another student showed it to my wife. She ran to the front office and called 911. Kid was home with his mom and had overdosed in his room. Kid was taken to a hospital and survived. Saved his life. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.